Welcome everybody to this new episode of the Business Storytelling Talks. We are very glad today to have uh, here with us uh, Mr. Ferdinando Cervigni, Country Manager of Amer Sport. Ferdinando, uh, Amer or Nando probably, that is the shortest way, right? Uh, Amer probably is not well known to everybody, uh, but you are the Country Manager. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, Amer and about yourself? We're very curious uh, to hear from you. Sure, Antonio, and uh, definitely Nando. Nando. And, uh, uh, very nice, very nice to talk with you and, uh, and shout to everyone uh, who is watching it. Um, yes, Amer Sport is, uh, is basically a sport company, a sport corporation. Not everyone knows the name, but maybe most of, of the people knows the, the brands behind uh, Amer Sport. Uh, say the, the most iconic are uh, Salomon, Arterix, uh, uh, Atomic, uh, Wilson, uh, Assunto, uh, Peak Performance are, uh, are a few others. Let's say that we, we touch a lot, of, uh, a lot of sports, a lot of outdoor sports. It's a, it's a super funny industry, um, super interesting brands. And uh, I was lucky enough uh, to become the um, country manager of the um, Italian uh, um, subsidiary for, uh, for Ama Sport. Uh, but I have uh, to admit, I had a pretty boring career because uh, this is only my, let's say, second employer. Uh, I've done 15 years in, uh, in, in Procter & Gamble. Uh, again, most of the people know Procter & Gamble, but they most probably know the brands uh, exactly. behind Procter & Gamble with, uh, I mean, Gillette, Pampers, and, uh, and you, you name it. In, um, which brand did you work? Can you, can you remind me? Uh, I work on Tide, which is basically yes. the, 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 the detergent is Dash in Italy yeah. uh, and, uh, and many other names uh, across Europe. I work on Duracell. Um, I work on, um, on, on Swiffer, I work on Oral B, uh, I work on IEMS, the pet food with the Okanuba, and, uh, and I work with Pringles. Uh, and I think uh, I work in Bella as well, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, the salon professional care brand. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, despite being a single employer there, I mean, the, 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 the nice thing I like there is that I. I had the chance to move in different brands in a uh, in, in few different functions as well. I've done uh, research and development, I've done sales, uh, I've done marketing as well. Uh, so pretty much I, I don't know to do anything. Uh, <laughs> I, I know just a bit of uh, uh, the, the overall and that what brought me in, uh, uh, in, in our sport, in a, in a different industry, but I have to admit that I still uh, enjoy a lot of the learning and uh, I got from uh, from, from PNG. Uh, and I can see, I can guess you you play tennis. I can see a tennis racket behind you. Am I right? Well, I, I say I pretend to play tennis. You pretend. As much as, I, as, as much as I pretend to ski. But no, yeah, uh, I, I do a bit of the sport, uh, uh, let's say, we sell. And, yeah. uh, and actually, it, it, it's nice. I mean, doing a customer event uh, snowboarding is something i it's hard to define work honestly yeah so it, well um, it's a very very nice nice place to be right yeah it is it is i, I was uh, was lucky maybe i put something on but uh, most was luck it went well probably you were very good on telling good stories uh, both about yourself and about the business <laughs> maybe, you are you're focusing maybe, right maybe, <laughs> maybe i just uh, i just fake a good storyteller <laughs> oh, yeah exactly yeah. People, people believe, and, <laughs> people uh, believe and, your stories. <laughs> and indeed, so, story, storytelling is something that um, I jump in when you ask me to do a, a little speech or a dialogue or whatever, a chat, uh, because I think storytelling is, uh, is something that is uh, extremely important, uh, especially in, uh, in this very uh, dense of information words. It's a way to kind of uh, um, bring the audience and, and move the audience in the direction you think is the right one. Uh, passing an information, sharing, uh, uh, sharing data is, is simply not enough, uh, but you just have to make sure people understand, your audience understand uh, what you are telling them and, and they are kind of move towards an action 
based on uh, uh, on what that on what the story that you're telling uh, uh, is implying and uh, I, I use storytelling pretty much uh, uh, every day I find it as a extremely um, successful and efficient way of uh, of communicating with people is memorable uh, and is much more than uh, uh, than, than, than just something said, but uh, you, the audience can, uh, can drive a lot of insights and, uh, and benefit from a good storytelling. And uh, so well done on, uh, on choosing this, uh, this part. This topic, uh, for, yeah. This topic. I think it's, uh, it's super important. Actually, Ananda, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to hear, to hear these words because I believe too that especially actionable uh, storytelling, uh, that means activate your audience effectively, is absolutely a game changer when you have ideas, projects, you know, to be told to an audience. And, and the reason why we invite you here, because uh, I believe that you are a very successful storyteller. You are a very good CV, very good brands you've been working for, that they tell great stories. So leading those brands, it means that you were able really to turn... Uh, uh, normal stories into actionable stories, stories that, were, as you said very well, they drive action. So, uh, I mean, I would like, first of all, to hear some stories from you, because it sounds like uh, looking at what you told us uh, in your career, you have quite a lot of exciting stories. And, and even before that, uh, and before hearing a couple of stories from your side, is how would you, how would you define the effective business storytelling? When, when do you think storytelling becomes effective for a brand, for example? I mean, one of the brands you've been working uh, and leading are absolutely fine. When do you really think that we can say that business storytelling makes a difference? Well, I think it, 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 it should drive, uh, at the end of the day, an action from the audience. I mean, that, that's what you want to uh, take out uh, whenever you do a storytelling. It shouldn't stop there per se, but it should, do, it should be something that really drives your, your target audience. And your target audience can be, can be anyone, can be your mom, can be the, the buyer, can be the consumer. Uh, but when you, when you tell a story or uh, you, you pass a message, uh, the, the key factor of success to me is that after that storytelling, or uh, that specific message you pass, uh, there is an action behind. And, uh, and the audience is difficult because the audience is, uh, is bombarded by hundreds of information, news. Uh, Every day. We have too much. We have too much today. And uh, so it's a, it's a way to kind of uh, cut into the magnitude of uh, information with something that it's, it's memorable. It's... Uh, it's, and it's uh, really distinctive and target to the specific audience. And, uh, and when you do that, uh, uh, it really works. And uh, I, I will pass you a couple of examples, that which I'm not sure are good storytelling, but are, uh, are, uh, I've been thinking uh, um, last couple of days before this call on a couple of examples to pass um, uh, on what I believe are, are good storytelling or at least good example or experience in, uh, in my professional life, which uh, I hope can be of uh, inspiration or at least can be fun to, to hear for, uh, uh, for some of your, of your audience. And uh, if I may, I will start with uh, a, a pretty early example in, uh, in, in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually... Uh, I just arrived in Rome uh, from Brussels where I start and I, I was appointed a, a system brand manager on Pringles. An assistant brand manager is, is basically someone that helped the brand manager, which is the, let's say, head of the brand on, um, on developing the strategy and executing uh, uh, the branding in the country. And, uh, and I was working on Pringles. You also work on Pringles. So you yeah, know yeah. How yeah. How fantastic and inspirational. Yeah, is that's that. amazing. Really, really, really. Really, I mean, a great brand. And I'm very curious to hear the story, actually, and, and about our actually, beloved brand. Yeah, and you can actually really, really think a bit out, out of the box, uh, go a bit out of the scheme there. Um, and, uh, but everything starts with a, uh, always, as always, as a, with a precise uh, uh, business brief. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, pretty much everywhere but uh, especially in italy pringles was a 
an extremely successful brand, but was extremely good in, in the summer period. Mm -hmm. uh, for multiple reasons, I think the convenience to, to take the chips out of the pack, uh, they don't break, uh, it's easy to transport and so on. So we really have, a, uh, I would say half of the business was done basically the, during the three uh, months uh, of summer. And then it was a bit of a decline. Another seasonal peak from a, a um, cheap standpoint uh, in terms of consumption was Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but we Especially were in the UK, to... right? In, in the north yeah. of Europe, it was, you know, massive over well, Christmas. It was massive, but we were yeah. not so good on intercepting that, that business uh, uh, because other brands were taking advantage. It was mostly inside uh, a big pack of chips uh, shared because there was a lot of consumption. So we really didn't, didn't really have a, uh, a huge success from a, uh, from a market standpoint, turnover standpoint yeah. during Christmas. Uh, and it has been, a, let's say, a, a recurring business question uh, uh, for several years. And then I remember we had a, a sort of a mega meeting uh, with, a, with a very well done brainstorming with the, uh, lots of people also from the, um, from the headquarters uh, cross-function, uh, I think, I think uh, more than 20 people. We, we stay in a room for uh, almost a day to kind of brainstorm on uh, uh, what we could do uh, differently, what kind of uh, commercial innovation, communication, marketing activity we could bring in Christmas to kind of uh, develop the business further during that period. And we came out with an idea after this... Uh, um, one day kind of uh, very well done brainstorming. I actually can't even remember the idea because, <laughs> I, really, I, really, because I really didn't like it. And uh, You didn't like it, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know for, for what reason, and I was there, I also contributed to the, to, to the brainstorming actively, but uh, I think we, it was a, for sure it was a good yeah. idea, but I can't even remember. So, uh, and I was a bit... Uh, I was a bit frustrated because the uh, decision was taken at the end of the day in business. You have to take decision. Yeah, there exactly. Certain rhythm. So, and people were okay. -ish. I mean, it was, uh, it was. It was not a wow. Nobody really remember. It was not wow, right? And maybe some somebody had a wow, but certainly not I you. Didn't, <laughs> certainly didn't have a wow. So uh, basically, okay, I went home a bit uh, not particularly happy. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> and, and I think here, the brain of everyone works in a different, uh, in a yeah. different way. And uh, my brain, personally, from an uh, idea creation standpoint, works at best when it sleeps. Uh, okay. So basically, the next morning, uh, I, I can, it was 15 years ago, I believe, and I can still remember, I woke up and I had it was clear to me. I, I found it. Uh, and I immediately thought intuitively that was a, a superb idea. Uh, and then I went through the, some, let's say, objective uh, screening. And I said, fuck, this is, this is it. This is it. And uh, we got it. Yeah. I, I think, I, think uh, I, I, must, I must do it. Uh, and then I, I, explained, I explained very briefly. And it's super simple idea, and, and the simplest ideas always are the ones that are working. For mm. basically, uh, if you exclude the, uh, the religious part, uh, so Christmas is basically, there are three things in Christmas. There is the Christmas tree, um, yeah. there is Santa Claus, or Babbo yeah. Natale, whatever you want to call it. Correct. And in Italy specific, there are a couple of cakes, uh, which are called Pandoro and Panettone. Course, and Panettone. Uh, most of our also international audience, I'm, I'm sure they, they know it, which is a, a simple cake, which is eaten, and I never understood why, only in Christmas. Only in Christmas. It's very true, and yeah. It's, uh, and it's incredible. If you enter any hypermarket or supermarket during Christmas period, I would say that it's at full. least 10% of... Uh, of yeah. the supermarket space is dedicated to Pandora and Panettone. To Pandora and Panettone, yeah. And I thought, well, yeah, it's, 
we used to do with Pringles duo pack, three pack, four pack. So basically, it means driving consumption, putting more than one can together. And I say, what if I just take a Pandoro and I put three cans inside the Pandoro? And I can even call it Prindoro. No way. But wait, 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 wait a second. Let me understand. So the three cans go inside the Pandoro box, right? Yeah, you have a Pandoro like, okay. box. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you empty the Pandora box, you put three cans. Yeah, okay. You put three cans. Of you course. Close the Pandora box, and you do a sort of uh, uh, Pringles uh, uh, artwork. So it's a Pandora yeah. with, uh, with with the Pringles with, branding and a Pringles color, etc. Uh, Pringles story. I said, "Wow, well, this is this is so wow. simple. <laughs> it, it cannot, it cannot, uh, it must it cannot fail. He it has to win. Work. Yeah. People are just uh, eating Pandora. It's." Uh, it's not a usual sweet Pandoro. Yeah, of course. It would be a salty <laughs> it's different. Pandoro. It's a salty Pandoro. <laughs> you dry consumption because you need a lot of chips because you do parties and these are yeah. three can. Um, why not? I mean, it's, and then it's uh, the, the, the color of, uh, of Christmas is red. Uh, the, the, the Pringles mo most uh, uh, sold. sold uh, yeah. Kind of uh, line in Italy is the original one, which is red. The red, yeah, the red one. Yeah. And it uh, was a was a perfect fit. Uh, so I was, uh, I was super enthusiastic. I remember I went kind of like uh, <laughs> I went like crazy. Um, at that time, I was living with a uh, with a flatmate that wasn't really uh, super. Uh, um uh, kind of uh, organized <laughs> so it was it was april and we still had a pandoro <laughs> box uh, in the kitchen so so i i i i did it so i did it physically so let, let me see if it fit and uh, by magic was fitting perfectly so i put three can in boom done boom done so i say wow and now how do i manage yeah, because the meeting was closed, the decision was taken, uh, and I've been thinking, uh, what's the best way to to convey this? And uh, I really wanted to do it, and it, it was not about rejecting a decision taken, but it was about, uh, come on, we're taking a decision yesterday. Uh, I have a bomb. I want to do yeah, it. I want to do it. Uh, so how did you do it? I, I, I could have done a PowerPoint. Yeah. I could have gone to talk to my boss. Yeah. Uh, go, go and talk to the marketing director or send an email. But I knew it was going to be sort of, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Done, yeah. uh, all stakeholders are aligned. Uh, let's keep it for next year and so on. But I thought it was so intuitive and visible that what I've done is I went... <laughs> I went to the guy in the office that was doing the artwork and I went with my physical Pandoro and I say, look, I want the this. one, the one with the, yeah. I, yeah. Want, I want this, not say anybody. I want this, <laughs> but with a Pringles kind of design. Artwork uh, around. Yeah. Why do you want to do that? But don't, don't worry. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's for a test. Uh, he said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. I have so many things to do. There is no chance I can do it. Ah, please, please. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I cannot do it. Two hours after, I edited in my... <laughs> in my he got excited too about the idea. Yes, he got excited. And uh, so I had this uh, Pandoro shape uh, uh, with the Pringles name. It was a very beautiful uh, first example as well. And so I, I was lucky enough to have uh, a very luxury desk uh, in, uh, in Procter at that time, which was uh, basically on the way of in the corridor on the way to the bathroom. So pretty much everyone was passing by. Everyone was going there. High so visibility just, desk. Okay. I just put it on the desk. I just put it on the desk. Fantastic. Just drop it on the desk. Then the sales director passed. I, I, I remember as it was today, I was passing by, he was saying ciao. Then he goes, then he stopped. He does three steps back. He looked at me and he told me, è geniale. È <laughs> geniale. È <laughs> geniale. It's genius. What, what it is? It's, uh, no, we need to do it. 
Um, we need to do it because he was in in the, in the brainstorming wow, as man. well. No, but look, I mean, I didn't align anyone. I said uh, it was just a no way. We need to do. Come with me, and he, he, <laughs> no. he takes me by hands and he brings me upstairs, seventh floor, to the to the general manager of of PNG. So it, it, no meeting plan. So it just uh, drop in, and the guy goes, "Look, uh, it was Vito Arvaro, which uh, if he's listening, yeah, of uh, course, Vito. I still yeah. thank him." And he said, uh, "Look, Vito, there is a uh, there is an idea here from from Nando. I really want to see. I really want you to see it. Uh, Nando, please, can you explain it?" So I just show the <laughs> the Prindoro. The Prindoro, yeah. Prindoro is the name. I love it. Prindoro. 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 And he said, uh, he looked at me and said, how many do you want to do? I had no idea. No so idea. I just throw I just throw a volume number, which was for me insane. He said, at least five times more. Three minutes after, it was approved. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. The, usually in PNG, to have an approval for an idea, it takes uh, three months, four months. Three minutes after it was three approved. Minutes. And actually, for Christmas, he actually sent uh, the Brindoro to all the general manager uh, in the, in the in, world. In the world. Greetings from, uh, from Vito. Uh, and as a consequence, so I'm, I'm not sure it was only because of that. I like to believe it was only because of that. Kind of three months, uh, three months later, I got promoted brand manager, uh, and that was uh, uh, that was a super interesting. Uh, I was very happy. I and then I use this imagine. example because because I think it's uh, uh, there are few uh, few things that I like uh, about this idea. First of all, is uh, don't give up. I mean, if you are not happy with the decision taken, uh, uh, there is a point where you, 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 you must be happy with the decision taken, but yeah. if you are not really convinced, uh, keep, uh, keep thinking. Keep pushing, yeah. Keep thinking. And, uh, uh, but if you want to challenge uh, a decision taken or whatever, come with something that is, uh, in my case, visible. So it's, it's, it's obvious. Uh, and I found that that was a much easier way than, uh, than go to a meeting where I was showing a PowerPoint uh, with people asking questions and, uh, and maybe, maybe kind of very good questions, which also could kill the idea. Just show the idea. If, uh, and, and sometimes it's, it's simple to do it. Um, and act. So basically, don't, don't, don't just wait for uh, uh, another very good boss I had. He always told me. Uh, don't don't uh, apologize rather than ask for permission so just just do it uh, my boss possibly couldn't be happy about it she was yeah. happy actually but just do it if you think something is good just uh, uh, just push it and uh, and also show enthusiasm and, uh, and uh, more than show enthusiasm be enthusiastic of what you do and then uh, and then you will mobilize things so that's my uh, that's my little story on uh, on uh, on the Pandoro uh, move to Brindoro. The Brindoro, uh, which all, also had the, the consequence of a of a promotion for myself. Fantastic! So it really sounds like the power of execution. You know, if you if you bring to life a strategy in a very compelling visual way, and people can in a second understand what you're talking about, that's probably the, the strongest story. You know, the most actionable story. Because people can immediately feel what you are thinking and they can visualize. They can make this visualization as, they, as you said, the, 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 the general manager, Vito, was saying, we can do five times more. They immediately get into your story. They buy your dream, right? And in my, and in my kind of, uh, uh, let's say, storytelling approach, my audience in this specific case uh, was an internal audience. I had to yeah. convince the internal stakeholders, the, the sales team, of course, that, that was something easy to sell. And, uh, and and when you see it, and as a matter of fact, it mobilizes a lot of uh, a lot of enthusiasm. So uh, make them believe it, kind of, really. Make them believe it of your of your story. And do that, you? That I mean, kind of, these stories really. 
It's really insightful. And did you bring any kind of uh, key learning from this story into your current role? Do you have anything that is uh, close to this kind of power of visualization that today is really still a game changer for you? Yeah, now, uh, let's say, fortunately and unfortunately, I have a, if you want, a, a, a bigger freedom. A bigger and, freedom. And my, and my role and bigger is responsibilities. Bit, yeah. yeah, my role is a bit different uh, in terms of... Uh, most of the time I, I, I'm not the one that is proposing something but most of the time by role I'm the one that is actually killing ideas or, or is, is kind of trying to focus uh, um, team and people on, uh, on, on driving few actions uh, but I still try to remember this learning and, uh, um, and try to stick to, uh, to this experience so when somebody comes with the uh, with a new idea, when somebody comes with, uh, um, with, with a real enthusiasm, when somebody is, uh, is fully convinced that something is right, uh, I acknowledge the fact that I don't know it because I, I can know only a part of, uh, uh, of the business uh, I'm working on and I'm not an expert on, on, on many aspects and field. So if I see that somebody is convinced uh, and if I feel that it sounds right. It sounds right. I mean, I think let's just try it. Um, most of the times we try to focus on the 100 reasons why we shouldn't do something. And there are always uh, 100 reasons why we shouldn't do something. I try to push myself to kind of focus on the few reasons, maybe the single one or the two reasons why we should do something. And, uh, and I think this kind of uh, uh, mentality, and I'm, I'm not saying that I'm always like that, <laughs> because uh, clearly we need to kind of st still focus, but I, 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 I really believe that this drives uh, um, ownership, enthusiasm um, from the team that are at the end of the day, the one that are uh, generating uh, idea or bring, bringing new, new thing in the market. And uh, um, I have actually, uh, well, I believe is a good example on, uh, on, on, on this one. Pretty much three years ago, uh, a very smart guy that was working in my organization on, on Wilson. Okay. Uh, the tennis racket, right? The tennis racket business, yeah. Yeah, which, which in Italy is, is mostly, uh, was mostly tennis. Um, he came to me with a, a, a super duper presentation on, uh, on Paddle. Three years ago, I have to admit, I, I was not even aware that Paddle, was existed. Paddle exists. Yeah. Uh, but, and basically, in a nutshell, he just wanted to put um, an important chunk of marketing investment into Paddle. He had a very convincing story uh, in terms of trend, uh, in terms of other countries, uh, uh, numbers, developing uh, uh, competitors. So the, the story was there. Um, I still wasn't super into the details. Uh, and uh, what I've done is I look at the numbers and I really couldn't find a good reason why we should move, a, move yeah. a, a big chunk of the investment that I was a, I was a, a, a big skeptical. I could see it, but I was a, a, a big skeptical. It was a bit uh, too futuristic if you want, uh, if you want for me. Uh, but, I, but it was, I, I was really having full trust of him, I, but I pushed back. So I started, I started really looking at these 100 reasons why it wasn't the right moment to do it. So it was very smart. And he told me, well, okay, um, in any case, I book a paddle court for next Thursday. So we go and play. Uh, okay. I was good. Well, it was nice. I could uh, I could see something new. So he broke me to to play paddle, and I saw it firsthand. So I understood what paddle was. Uh, I understood the the enormous trend that he was having, the enormous advantage from a, a, a kind of a business standpoint, consumer standpoint, the engagement that that was driven the. Uh, Everyone is playing, everyone is having fun. Uh, 
from the first time you play. Uh, it's, it's very social. Yeah. Uh, um, and I've, I've seen what could be. And three years ago was pretty much not existing in Italy. There were really starting in Rome, but the rest of Italy was not there. Yeah. And it was very smart. So it brought me there. It was even smarter because he put me with a, a good player. So we won. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we, we, we in Italia we have an expression for that right but uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and, and I, have to, I have to say that uh, so we decided to, to, to put, uh, to put some, some investment in Paddle and, uh, and I think we were among the, the first let's say important brands kind of uh, um, surfing this uh, emerging trend yeah. which now is, it's massive. It's not an emerging trend. It's yeah, massive. No, it's, yeah. And, uh, and the turnover that we are generating and the position we have with Wilson um, Paddle in the market is absolutely re relevant. And I'm not saying that this wouldn't have happened, uh, but I think this, uh, this early push we had um, uh, was a terrific help. And, and the guy was very smart because uh, he couldn't convince me with a PowerPoint uh and basically it broke me to touch it as of much course. as uh, as much as uh, you can touch the the, the prindoro the prindoro and, uh, and i think that's kind of uh, uh that's kind of a a story that i think kind of uh, activate the audience uh in the Definitely. first example it was myself kind of you were the teller the then you were the audience and yeah now exactly I was, I was the audience and i was um I was able to focus. Uh, it was in a different environment than a than a PowerPoint presentation in an office, uh, and I could really touch it uh, uh, physically. So that's uh, that's pretty much the fantastic the, the story. So, Nando, I mean, we don't have a lot of time left, unfortunately. But let me say, it. I want to invite you again uh, to another business selling talk because the stories you are sharing with us are, first of all, great learning, but great fun. I don't know if people, you know, listening and watching the video have the same fun, but for me, the Prindoro, fantastic. Uh, and how, how a Pringles can inside a Pandoro pack and how playing squash can change really, you know, your career and can change the result, the business result. So I would ask you, you know, in the last uh, kind of three minutes we have, if you can highlight uh, like uh, two or three key actionable takeouts from the story you share with us that can really help our audience uh, to create a, uh, these kind of stories, as you said very well, can activate the audience uh, effectively, can really you know, make the audience in a position to take the action uh, that you are looking for, you as a storyteller. I would say that the, 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 key, the key, it's a learning, but the, the key point to me is, is really make it simple. Make it simple, make it visible, um, make it easy to understand. Uh, we unfortunately we are living in a place where it's it's difficult to get people attention mm. people are distracted we, we we got so many things to look at so uh, whatever you think whatever you want to say make sure you can you can show it really in a we used to have this uh, what was called the 10 10 seconds elevator speech yeah it's 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 even less than that it's a, a glimpse of an eye speech, a kind of a selling story. So you have, you have to immediately understand what, what's, the, what's the story about, and then you can go in the details, but uh, really make it visible. Uh, the other point is, uh, um, there is a point where you have to, you have to let it go uh, because the decision has been taken uh, and it's, it's, it's right to execute uh, a certain point in time or, or go in the direction you, you want it, but, if you are not convinced, uh, don't be happy with a decision. Uh, there, is always, there is always a second time to find a way to, to come with a new idea, new approach, uh, new system. Uh, and, and you will find people that are, uh, if they see that it's something that can bring uh, added value kind of uh, are following you. And, and maybe the other, the other point is that uh, which at the end of the day is, uh, is, is possibly the most important one. Um, don't, I, I said it already, but I really believe it. Don't show 
enthusiasm, but be enthusiastic. So what you do, uh, it's whoever works in this uh, environment, I think is a privileged position. Uh, I do a job which is, uh, which is a dream job for, uh, for many people. And uh, remember yourself that that's a dream job. And, uh, and it's kind of, uh, you must be enthusiastic every day. If you are not, uh, uh, maybe challenge yourself, uh, uh, maybe it's time to change. And yeah. uh, if you are enthusiastic, uh, people will, will breath it, will, will see it, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and things will go, will go smoother. So that's the most uh, um, uh, effective, uh, uh, it's not a storytelling, but it's, it's a storytelling approach on, uh, on, on driving people is uh, really show you believe in what you say uh, and, and, and be behind that. Uh, yeah. embrace embrace this and uh, at least it worked for me and uh, I'm transparent if, uh, if I'm not convinced people will see and uh, and things will not work and we can also see clearly your your enthusiasm it really looks like uh, you're bringing to life the quote I read once that is uh, be the enthusiasm you want to see in people so really be that kind of you know passion enthusiasm and also the execution and the example you you share with us are a really, a really the result of this kind of enthusiasm you have of what you're doing. So, Nando, really, time is over, unfortunately. I really want to thank you. It was a big pleasure to have this uh, chat with you. Uh, this talk, I think, it's, uh, it's a spark of fun on top of uh, great learning uh, from a great leader. And uh, good luck with uh, all your uh, enthusiasm and passion. And the organization is lucky to have this kind of enthusiastic leader. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not. And uh, we're going to see each other very soon. Thanks again. That's Ciao, Nando. Ciao. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao.